my beautiful beings, welcome back to my channel, Hippie Housewife, and if you are new, welcome as well. This video is not indeed a dreadlocks video, but one that I am very excited to do, and I've been wanting to do for great a great time, blah, 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 blah. and it is 27, if I can speak today, 27 recycling tips that I am going to share with you. So I'm gonna breeze through them as fast as I possibly can. So let's get started with tip number one. My first recycling tip is reusing mason jars. I have so many around my house that can be used in such diverse different topics and shindigs and I use them to house my cooking ingredients in my kitchen and I will also use them for a water jug because of the lids and take them on adventures with me and the kids for the day. And I also go as far as to using them in my bathroom to put in cotton balls and things of that nature. So mason jars are huge on the recycling tip list. Now my tip number two are canvas bags. So yes, I do use some grocery bags that are plastic for certain purposes around my household, but then I also shop at a local grocery store called Aldi that I use reusable canvas bags. And I also use these for multiple other purposes like going on an adventure for the day and maybe we're going to the swimming pool and the kids get each of their own canvas bags to put their goodies in for the day. Canvas bags are a great recycled material to use on a daily basis. Now my tip number three is old sponges. I will save old sponges for dirtier cleaning jobs to do around the house. Maybe my husband can use them in the garage for some kind of purpose. I will use them to do the base of my toilet area. Now I do rinse them really well with like an antibacterial solution because obviously you want to use them for cleaning. So you don't want them to be gross and nasty when you're going to clean, but you can reuse them instead of constantly throwing them away. And you will be surprised at how often you could use an old nasty sponge. My tip number four is saving old clothes to convert them into old rags. I also will save old clothes if I like the material or the fabric and I will use them for some of my arts and crafts. My husband likes this because I can stock up the garage, he can use them to do the oil changes, and then I also like to use them for certain cleaning uh, projects to do around the household. You'd be amazed at how often you could use an old rag that you recycled from old clothing. Number five is plastic grocery bags. Now I'm not very fond of keeping too many around because obviously they're bad for the environment, but in certain scenarios there are just some dirty jobs to do around a household that you don't want to use reusable things for. So number one, I have three cats. When I change out a cat box, I use those plastic bags. And then I also have an 11 month old, so whenever she has a dirty nasty diaper, by the end of the day I have a few collected in a plastic grocery bag and I will tie that sucker up and take it out for trash. My tip number six is saving your old plastic potting, plant potting shindigs from the grocery store or wherever you get your plants. Basically, um, I do a produce garden and a sunflower garden and an herb garden and a few other gardens every single year. So my husband and I like to pre-start our plants in this little growing space that we have in our home and then we will convert them out into the gardens. So whenever we buy already pre-planted items, we still like to save those little plastic things because we will be using them and using them and using them time and time again. So that is a great recycling tip. My tip number seven is a burn box. So we like to keep cardboard items around the house from old cereal boxes or pasta boxes, um, old junk mail or old bills, and we will create a burn box and we will take that out at least once a week, especially when it gets extremely full. And we will use it for kindling to start our bonfires and then also it's a way to just completely reduce the waste and garbage in this world, which Mother Nature thanks us greatly for. My number nine tip is a compost soil pile. So I know this can be time consuming and sometimes not done in an appropriate way, but we tend to save all of our chopped up items from the kitchen, from cooking, so maybe like potato skins, anything vegetable or fruit related really. And then I'll also use coffee grounds, oatmeal, things that we are kind of not going to be finishing on our plates or what I have used to preparation 
for meals and I will create a whole little shindig in a plastic container. I'm using shindig a lot today, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I will create a little plastic container and once it's filled up, I will take it out in the evening time and I will add it to my compost soil, which in turn is a recycled concept in putting nourishment back into my garden. And is twist ties. So you can reuse these and pretty much use them for darn near anything. I like to organize the cords and behind my entertainment stand in my living room because of the cats and the kids and I will just wind everything up nice and neat as best I can because let's face it, it looks like a mess back there half the time with all the wires. But it's a nice way to keep things organized so that way kids and cats and toys aren't getting all tangled and mangled in there. And then let's face it, you can use twist ties for pretty much any little project around the house including hanging up your Christmas lights, maybe you want them to be angled a certain position. Twist ties are a great recycled material. My number 11 is freezer bags. So I will reuse a freezer bag probably two to three times and rinse them out really well. And after that, I will rinse them again and put them in the recycling bag and take that out by the end of the day. So that way I feel like I'm getting a couple uses out of it before they're worn out. And I'm not just blowing through freezer bags on a constant basis because I do make my own baby food here at home and I do reuse them a great deal. But you don't wanna overuse them because then their components break down and could get the food so but it is a nice tip to be able to use a recycled item around the house number 12 are saving old toothbrushes I like to use old toothbrushes to polish up my jewelry and I also like to use them for cleaning around the house now with the polishing of the jewelry thing just a really quick tip that is not recycling related and my mother taught me this you can take some toothpaste on an old toothbrush and you can use it to polish your uh, your jewelry and it will become so shiny and beautiful so that's just a nice little helpful tip but as you know saving old toothbrushes you can find a great deal of dirty jobs that you can use that scrubber for my tip number 13 is rubber bands. I save those as well, and you never know when you could use a rubber band. Tip number 14 is saving old boxes, especially ones with handles, and you can use these as storage bins. I will link a video down below that I created of using recycled materials to make storage boxes that I had saved and recycled look pretty by using recycled materials around your household to decorate them and make them look nice and uniform and these are great for housing toys and equipment and tools and all kinds of stuff especially for a storage space in your household. My tip number 15 are dryer sheets and lint. Lint from your dryer is a great fire starter for kindling so sometimes I will save that in a grocery bag and take it along a camping trip or use it to get the fire started out back because we have a huge fire pit and then dryer sheets I will use a couple times until I no longer smell the scent in them so probably two to three times and I have also researched beforehand that you can use dryer sheets for cleaning my tip number 16 may sound odd but it is water I tend to try and recycle water as best as I can I have a small well and I also feel that water is just extremely important obviously so by the end of our meals if the kids and I haven't finished our glass of water by the end of the evening when it's time to go to bed and people are done using their glass for the day I will have a pitcher on my counter and I will dump all the water from all the glasses that nobody's using anymore into that pitcher and then on rainy days I will also put a few pitchers out on my porch to collect fresh rainwater and I will use this to water my garden and all of my plants on a day that it is not raining <laughs> my tip number 17 is anything that goes along with hemp or string yarn ribbon obviously these are key essentials rope these things can be used for damn near anything i use hemp for so many things in my life i use recycled ribbons that i got from gifts from people and i will incorporate those in arts and crafts with the kids so this is a really great recycled material to have especially if you're an arts and crafty type of person and maybe just put that in your bin and you will be amazed at how many times you'll go to start a really cool project and open up that bin and just the creative juices are flowing from there 18 are gift bags and like jewelry boxes and gift boxes I have two huge gift bags one that has a Christmas scene on it and the other that has like a birthday celebration on it and I keep them in my storage area in my household and then I also will save other gift bags that are related to that holiday and keep them in that giant bag 
as well as like little small jewelry boxes and things of that nature. So then when it's somebody's birthday or a special celebration or a baby shower or anything like that, I can quickly just go straight downstairs and sift through that bag. And before you know it, like I have so many in there that no family member or anybody really even notices that they may have seen that a time or two before, and then if they still have a little tag on them, obviously I remove that and make sure not to repeat and give that to the same person. But it is a nice way if you're especially a really busy person like myself and you're quickly trying to rush to a birthday party that you have items already on you that you can create a nice gift really quick right away. Number 19 is using old jewelry or beads. So I tend to go through my jewelry box every few years and there are items that I just am not using anymore and I feel it's just cluttering up my room space. So what I will do is sift through that and see what I am able to um, kind of dissect and reuse in another jewelry adventure because I do create my own jewelry dream catchers and I do paint as well and then other crafty things we do around the house as a family so you'd be amazed as well at what you can sift through and find in a little you know jewelry bead hunt with your kids and recycle them to make other precious things out of Number 20 may sound odd as well as water, but this is paper. I will, again, put paper in my burn box, whether it's old bills or old school papers or anything to that nature. And then also, if they don't have the backing on them, I will cut them up into small squares and make a stack and put them by our phone or on our computer desk, somewhere that you just need to quick, like, take a note and remember not to forget something and you can just reuse old paper instead of trying to constantly blow through a fresh stack of like a nice clean notebook or grabbing printer paper because it's quick and it's there. Um, and then when I put it in my burn box, it really makes a great fire starter and kindling. My tip number 21 is also a little bit strange, but you can recycle from plants, fruits, and vegetables. And obviously most of the world knows this, but where I'm getting at here is you can save the seeds. So if you have a really epic um, organic plant and you've got your produce from it for the season, but maybe it doesn't come back the next year, remember to save those seeds, dry them out very well and store them in an airtight container or bag and you will be able to harvest and replant and reuse from those plants the next season that you're ready to plant. For 22 is saving wood or sticks. So I have a great deal of arts and crafts that I do at the house with the kids that involves wood or sticks or twigs, pine cones, things like that. And then also you can save them for fire purposes. So if you have a whole bunch of twigs and sticks around your yard and you can kind of put your kiddos to work for some fun and collect some kindling and firewood. My tip number 23 are feathers. So like I had stated before, I make my own dream catchers and I do not like to purchase fake feathers. So I have a lot of collected all natural authentic feathers and you can use these for arts and crafts around your home. My tip number 23, oh, I just said 23, I repeated that. My next tip is saving coffee tins. I found this out accidentally because my 11 month old likes to go through things in my kitchen and when I had one that was empty, I rinsed it out really good, put the lid back on, I flipped it over to the tin side instead of the plastic lid side and it made the most epic drum sound. She was in love, I was in love, the older kids came over instantly and were in love. So now I have a few coffee tins that I'm saving up for each child and we're actually going to decorate and paint them and deck them all out and they're going to have a little bongo drum set for themselves but they make a really epic drum sound. I was extremely surprised by that. But that's a really cool recycling tip, especially half kiddos. And honestly, you can reuse the, the coffee tins for anything. So my husband likes to keep a couple in the garage so he can put nuts and bolts and screws and kind of keep things a little bit organized. And then you can also use them for kids' toys or bath toys or anything to that nature. So they can be reused as a nice little storage bin. And you can also flip them back over to the plastic side if you're not drumming from the tin side and cut a little slither in the plastic lip and you can make a really epic, awesome change saving bank for yourself.
My next tip is saving gift baskets. This tends to be around like the Christmas holiday season. Whenever somebody buys you a nice like coffee basket and it's got all these pretty goodies in it for your coffee materials or a fruit basket or like a bath and body works like lotions and gels and things like that. Save those baskets because you can use them around your house. They're pretty and decorative and they can house toys and storage in your bathroom, potpourri, whatever you're into. Baskets are really pretty little storage unit that you can use and it's recycled because it was gifted to you. My next tip is saving plastic containers. So obviously most people who are very environmentally friendly try and steer as much away from plastic as they can but in some cases this can be beneficial whenever you have children like myself and you are packing a lunch every single day for all of them. So I will save plastic containers that I bought maybe lunch meat or something in and I will use that instead of going through all of these sandwich bags all week long I will just assign a designated container for all the household family members that I'm packing a lunch for and I will reuse that every single day that I need to pack them a lunch including myself whenever we're going out on a picnic or to the swimming pool for the day or on a hike so that really saves a lot instead of breezing through so many bags and plastic bags that the earth just doesn't need to hold. My second to last tip is saving plastic applesauce cups. So again, I buy these for my kids school lunches and I like to have them save them when they remember because they make really good containers for um, say it's Easter and your egg dyeing with the kids so you can put different dye solutions in all the little cups and then I also like to give them to the kids on the couch and fill them with some snacks whenever they want just a little container of some pretzels or some goldfish and then we also use them for painting as well. And then my last tip may sound a bit odd, but let's face it, there are a lot of vapors in the world now and vaping people. So whenever you buy a bottle of vape juice or know somebody who vapes and buys vape juice or vape oils for their vaping, you can save these and reuse them because they were really awesome. I actually wish I had one sitting next to me. I do indeed have the dropper. <laughs> My husband's gun cleaning kit is sitting right next to me because he just got done doing that not too long ago and he used one of the droppers because it was perfect for what his project was. But basically, I make my own essential oils from the plants that I grow in my herb garden and they make the best vials because they're glass and they have the glass dropper to go in them. Whenever you are making your own essential oil or hair care product or dread care product, you will see a great deal of those actually in my videos. So I thought that I'd throw that one in there as the last recycling tip because I felt like it was a really useful one. Anyway guys, I hope that you enjoyed this content. It was very different from what I normally have been doing, but I want to do a lot more envir environmentally friendly topics on this channel because I am indeed the hippie housewife. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Interact with each other in the questions and comments section down below. And always remember to check out the description box because I always leave goodies down there, whether it be a link to purchase something that's an awesome buy or another video that may be related. And of course, my contact information if you ever want to reach out for any collaborations or other purposes. Um, and then I also do dreadlocks and have many clients. So if you ever have any questions pertaining to that, I can also help you as well. So wrapping this up guys, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you all have a very blessed day and I will see you all again very soon. Bye.